Then I explained the, the Coulomb branch, definition of Coulomb branch, and at the end I gave examples and I also briefly mentioned the Higgs branch, and it seems some people are confused. So I'd like to make it a little bit more clear. So we consider this example. So G is C star, and I consider direct sum of n copies of weight one representation. Then I explain the Coulomb branch is this type n minus one singularity. On the other hand, you can consider the Higgs branch, which I didn't explain at all, but I briefly mentioned this is first you take the cotangent bundle to n. So this is a di just direct sum of n and it's dual. And this is a symplectic vector space. And you take a symplectic reduction of this by g, this group g. So you start with the same data, same group and the representation symplectic representation. This is not a symplectic, but I replace n by this n plus n star. This is it, then it becomes symplectic. So for pairs of group and its symplectic representation, you can apply two construction. One is Coulomb branch, which I'm explaining. And another is much easier construction. This is symplectic reduction. Then uh, in this case, in practice, this is the description. So you have a homomorphism of A from Cn to C and B in the opposite direction. And the, uh, because this is symplectic reduction, you impose a moment map equation, moment map equals zero equation. This is A times B is equal to zero and then divide by the sister action. So this is a definition of a symplectic reduction here. Then in this case, it is very easy to understand what it is. So this is minimally impotent conform SLN. So the nilpotent element in here is just given by B times A. So AB is equal to zero, but if you uh, multiply in the opposite order, B times A is, uh, is nilpotent value matrix because the square is zero. And in fact, this is a minimal nilpotent orbit closure. So two varieties, MC and MH, are completely different varieties, unless N equal to N equal to uh, SL2, SL2 minimal nilpotent orbit is just nilpotent cone, and this is also nilpotent cone. So by, by accident, so n equal to it is the same variety, they are same variety, but in general they are different. I mean, of course, the dimensions are different, for example. But there are, uh, we will see, uh, there are many various mysterious relations between these two, two seemingly very different varieties. And that is called symplectic reality. So for illustration, I give this one phenomena. So we consider the, the resolution, there's a natural, the so-called symplectic resolution for both varieties. For, for Coulomb branch, so this is, as I said, this is type n minus one singularity, then there's famous resolution. And if you consider the, the exceptional locus of this resolution, it consists of uh, n minus one P1s, intersects like Dinkin diagram of type n minus one. And on the other hand, uh, minimal nilpotent for SLN also has a symplectic resolution. This is just given by cotangent bundle to Pn minus one. Then you compute Euler numbers of both and you can calculate separately, but they, they are the same. And in fact, uh, uh, Euler number can be calculated by, by studying the fixed points of the torus action. And in fact, we will see, maybe in tomorrow, I will explain the natural bijection between fixed points. And also, uh, there are way to relate representation theory, uh, some representation of, uh, in this case, SL2, uh, to each variety, each variety, MC children and MH children. And both, both correspond to some weight space in tensor product representations of iridium representations. So in that sense, this is just a coincidence, but there are, it seems there are uh, much 
uh, deeper relation between them. So we are still not quite uh, satisfactory conceptual understanding of symplectic reality, but we see many collections of interesting phenomena and many people are studying them. Okay, so let me continue. Ah, maybe, maybe I need to explain the convolution diagram because Zingwen de uh, described uh, the diagram for the convolution for power sheaves. So, good G was G of K by, by G of O, and we have T, G of K, G of O, of N of O, and we have a map to N of K, and R is a sub-variety, this is phi. I didn't write in this way, but so this is G of Z times S of Z. And this is sent to G of Z times S of Z. And R is uh, sub-variety of T uh, cut out by the condition that this is in. This has no pole. Then, uh, so we have the Convolution diagram. For for Affengrassmannian, which we just ran in the morning. And then so you have intermediate space, which is the quotient of this by G of O. And then you multiply. P, Q, M. <clears throat> then we have, so this is Mr. This So we have G cross R the projection. We have G of K cross R, right? Oh, what it is. So we have similar, similar diagram. So T, 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 T is defined in this way. So you have this, this similarly, this map. And then uh, in here you have R cross R. And this, so I also denote like this map by P. So P inverse of R cross R. Q of P inverse. <clears throat> so, so the third row is the, 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 the diagram which we, we want to use to define the composition product. So, I think that the most important, most, most difficult part of the construction is, is the definition of the pullback.
So we use uh, the so-called pullback with support, and somehow the, the pullback is uh, defined using this ambient space. And this, this trick, so the pullback with support is used in, in the finite dimensional setting. So as I said, the uh, convolution product is defined for homology group, but somehow you, 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 need, you need a pullback. Right? So you have three projections from here. The one three is used for, 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 for push forward, but you need to pull back for two, 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 two morphisms. And for that, we use that the smoothness of M. And so affine glass mania is, is not the smooth, although this, this, this is a homogeneous space, but we actually work on the, the finite dimension approximation. That is not homogeneous. That is not smooth. So we cannot uh, really define, uh, uh, so we must be, not really, we, we must be really careful why the pullback here, so although this is not smooth, we must be careful that this is defined. But basically that is because uh, this, 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 this is a bundle. So the projection pro, projection is flat. That that is somehow used hid secretly in defining pullback. So I I I, I cannot go further in the detail of the explanation. But if you are interested, just look at our paper. So this is not smooth, but nevertheless, you can still uh, define the pullback with support. And then, uh, so this Q, Q is almost another bundle, so you can descend the cross in here, and then push forward. This is the definition of push product. Any question for this, this part? OK, then I think I need to explain one of the formula, which I didn't explain, this, this one. So this was the first example. G equals C star and N equals zero. <clears throat> and Rn of Grassmannian G is G and then correspond to G of N. <clears throat> and Rn is a fundamental class. Then I need to compute the commutator. And the result is written here. This is n, n times h bar times rn. So here h bar is the variable for loop rotation. So loop rotation acts on, on the affine Grassmannian and all other varieties associated with this. And appeared in, in the definition of the Coulomb branch. That I had identified this as polynomial in, in one variables, and I denote the one variable by h bar. <clears throat> then, uh, so w, w is the equivalent variable for the gauge group for this G. So you, con you, you, you regard this as a line bundle, first chunk class of trivial line bundle over the point with non-trivial cis action. <laughs> OK. 
square with weight one. See the action. Then you apply this construction at the point, the, the, this point. Uh, in fact, in this case, uh, R, since n is equal to zero, so you, you, you can work on this, this, this first row. The point is you, 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 you need to descend from here to here, and you take the quotient by g of O, which is, for, for example, in the red band point at the n, so you multiply Zn, and because the, the loop rotation change Zn to Z tau of n, for, for tau in C star of loop. So tau to the power n is multiplied. So even if you start with, so this C star loop acts on trivially on here, but after after this step, it is twisted by, by this, this tau to the power n. So you get this one, right? <clears throat> and in particular, if h bar is equal to zero, then uh, this, 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 this doesn't change, and right-hand side vanish, and uh, so it means that multiply, although the, the maybe uh, also I should emphasize that the, the, the reason why that the second, the multiplication may not be linear in the second variable is, the, is, the, is because we take the quotient by here, right? So you have the zero action here, zero action, here. but we use the second zero action to descend descend the cross to here. So it's the reason why we don't have the linearity in the second variable. But at least for, for h by equal zero, this becomes linear. And the rest of the multiplication I explained already. Okay, any, any question? Okay, I return back to uh, general properties of Coulomb branches. So first is torus action. So torus action on, on the variety. So we define the variety as a spectrum of a commutative ring. So torus action on, on the spectrum means that we have a grading, grading on, on the commutative ring. And we look for the, the what kind of grading we have in our construction. The first one is uh, homological grading. So because this is a homological, and I emphasized uh, yesterday that this grading is not in, in non-negative integers. It is Z grading. That means that the, this cis, we have corresponding cyst action, but it's not necessarily conical action. So if you have a cyst action uh, grading, but uh, you have a non, non grading corresponding to non-negative integers, then uh, you have the corresponding conical. Well, maybe conical usually means that the degree zero part is const only constant function, but anyway, so you, you, you don't have you could have negative degree pieces. So that because of that reason, <clears throat> the, the action is not conical in general. And in this, this example, first example, uh, this W, e, e, w is, a, is a equivalent generator of equivalent cohomology. So it has degree two, cohomological degree two. On the other hand, Rn is a fundamental class of Gn. This is dimension zero. So Rn is degree zero. So the cyst action acts on, on this first component. So this is W and this is R plus minus one. So it acts trivially on the, R, the second component. On the other hand, you have another grading, which 
given briefly mentioned. So affine Grassmannian is not uh, connected in general. So in fact, uh, the connected component of affine Grassmannian is given by the fundamental group of, of, of the group. So it is, uh, one of the easiest way to see this is just, I think using the best loop Because Guru, Guruji is, is homeomorphic to best groups, to compact B, B groups. And pi one, and, no, no, this is pi, pi zero, sorry, connected component. So it's, it, it, it's by definition, this, this is a fundamental group of K. So this is true for any topological space. And this is isomorphic to pi one machine. So it means because the, uh, and also that this space R R R, R has a projection to find grass money and the fiber are, are contractible. So connected component is the same as connected component for the affine grass money, which is pi one G. So the space R decomposes according uh, to the parameterization of connected components. So it means this, 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 and also this is compatible with the multiplication. So if you consider this, right? Multiplication on pi one of G. It is well known the pi, pi one of G is abelian, abelian group. And the multiplication is compatible. So this algebra is pi one G graded. So it means that the Pontryagin dual of pi one G acts on, on, on the Coulomb branch. So if G is a simple, simple group, then pi one of G is, is a finite group. So then the Pontryagin dual is a finite, again finite group. So in that sense, it's not so interesting. But we are interested, so we just start to discuss many example, example of Coulomb branches. And in many cases, the, the group is general linear group or its product. Then pi one of G is just uh, G or several copy, direct sum of several copies of G. And if you take the Pontryagin dual, this is a C star or a torus. So in this way, you have the non-trivial torus action on, on the Coulomb branch. Another torus action on the Coulomb branch, different from the first one, okay? And this, in this example, uh, so we, we consider the, the affine grass money G, and this is given by the, this, this can be understood as a fundamental class of the, of C star, right? So it means that this C star action, contrary to the first one, so this acts on the second factor, not on the first factor. And you can also see that this, this second, second action uh, is, is a Hamiltonian action. It, it, I wrote this person bracket, but in fact, this is Hamiltonian. So it has, it, it preserves the symplectic form and there's a corresponding moment. I, I will describe what is a moment afterwards. And you see, uh, one feature in the symplectic duality here. So we consider one parameter subgroup in the torus acting on the space. So this is a torus acting on the Coulomb branch in Hamiltonian way. And I consider one parameter subgroup. Then uh, you can check that this is, this is, a, I mean, this is the, the exercise in, in in, in the usual Lee theory. So this is homomorphism from, from G to C star in terms of you, you spell out this, this definition. 
And this homomorphism from G to C star appears if you consider the GIT quotient for the Higgs branch. So Higgs branch was the symplectic reduction of vector space by, by G. And in that case, we first impose the moment map equation and take a categorical quotient. But you can also consider the GIT quotient if you have a non-trivial character. And also, you, you, you can also perturb the, the uh, moment map equation if this is non-trivial. So if G is, G is GLN, you have determinant. So you have one dimensional space for, for this. And this, this is, again, because this is sister to sister, this is one dimension. So you have a match here. And element in here is used different ways for Coulomb branch and Higgs branches. For Coulomb branches, for Coulomb branches, you, it is used as a sister action. So if you have a torus and if you have a one parameter subgroup, then you compose and you have the sister action on the Coulomb branch. On the other hand, for, for the Higgs branch, you use it as a stability coordination. So you either deform the space or you pick up modification of the Higgs branch. So you will see this kind of feature in other, other ingredient in, in the, uh, something other. Let me see. I think it will be explained in the next, yes. <clears throat> so next, I will explain what is physicists called flavor symmetry. So I consider the following situation. So suppose N is a representation of a larger group, G tilde. So we first start, start with the group and its complex representation, and secretly we consider the symplectic one. But we suppose N is a representation of a larger group, which contains G as a normal subgroup. Then we can take a quotient group. This quotient group is called flavor symmetry. <clears throat> then uh, this formal power series in G, G tilde, G tilde all acts on those all the spaces which we have considered. So then uh, we can take equivalent homology group with respect to larger group action, and again this becomes commutative. So you consider the corresponding spectrum. So this is a deformation of the original Coulomb branch. And the deformation parameter is the equivalent homology of this quotient group, right? And this spectrum of the quotient group is the maximal torus of this quotient group divided by a group of this quotient group. And again, this is a vector space. And if, if this quotient is a torus, and if it's not torus, you just replace G tilde by, by the inverse image of a torus. So this is not uh, essential assumption. But for, for this, it's, I, I, I need. Uh, GGF to be torus. Then, uh, instead of just uh, enlarge uh, this uh, group acting on the space, you can also enlarge the space itself. So you can consider the affine Grassmannian for G, G tilde. And you can consider the uh, T and R for G tilde, starting from G tilde and N. You can define the Coulomb branch for larger group. Right? Here, the difference is that here, we just uh, enlarge on, only the, the homology, uh, the group acting on the space. But we, here, we also change the space itself. And then, uh, by the same reason, the Pontryagin dual of the fundamental group of the 
larger group acts. So this is this group acts on this larger Coulomb branch. <coughs> and because of because the, the, this quotient is we, uh, we have the, the we are taking a Pontryag in dual fundamental group. So we have a more group of homomorphism G tilde at the TF, and we have the induced homomorphism in fundamental group, and taking Pontryag in dual, so you get the homomorphism in opposite direction. And we assume this the GF is torus, and fundamental Pontryag in dual of fundamental groups is dual torus. So on this larger Coulomb branch, you have the action of larger torus. And just uh, spelling out all the definition, you see that this original Coulomb branch is a symplectic reduction of this larger Coulomb branch by this torus action. So you impose a moment map equation and take invariant part. And the difference of G tilde and the G, the, the gauge group, the, the, the group which you take the quotient uh, equivalent homology is different. And this difference corresponds to moment map equation. And the difference of the, the space corresponds to, correspond to taking the, the invariance. So you, you see this, this isomorphism just from the definition. It, this is not, this is very easy statement. But once you have that, then you see that you can slightly modify the, the uh, quotient in here by using the, the uh, character of TF check as, as before. So rho is a character of TF check, which is a homomorphism from TF check, dual torus of TF to C star. But since this is a dual, this is isomorphic to co-character in TF, right? Then uh, you just consider what kind of role co-character of TF uh, will play in, in the Higgs branch. And it's, there's a natural role. So Higgs branch is defined as, as a quotient, symplectic reduction. Then if you have the, the M is a representation of larger space, then you have naturally the quotient action of the quotient group on this symplectic reduction. Ah, this is a typo, this is a C star. Okay, so you have C star action on the Higgs branch, which correspond to the formation of GIT quotient for the Coulomb branch. So recall, we have just the opposite one. For the character which you use to define GIT quotient in the Higgs branch, correspond to action on the Coulomb branch. And here, uh, action and stability conditions are exchanged, right? So we, we consider the, the Coulomb branch side. So by using larger group, we have deformation and the right quotient. That the same data give, gives the, mm, the action, sister action on, on, on the Higgs branch. And uh, I think the best example which you see this phenomena is the so-called Torica hyperkähler manifold introduced by Goto and Weber to Danza. So you consider that this exact sequence of torus. So you have C star of N acting on N-dimensional vector space, and you have sub torus, and you have quotient torus TF. Then hyperkähler, toric hyperkähler manifold is defined as the symplectic reduction. Marginally, maybe you can 
like before, so you can introduce a stability condition, GIT quotient from this. So this is the definition of Tori Kaipa And the main, it, it, it has some, some combinatorial flavor and you can study uh, its topology, for example, Betty numbers and you have the formula, combinatorial formula for those. And many things, so it's somehow, I mean, it's very similar to quiver variety, but more combinatorial space. And so this is, uh, because this is a symplectic reduction, this is regarded as, as Higgs branch. So you can consider the corresponding Coulomb branch. But now this is an example uh, of, uh, you have the larger group action and you have the flavor symmetry. So this TF is the flavor symmetry. And what did I say? So the Coulomb branch for the original space, this one, is a symplectic reduction of the Coulomb branch for larger space with respect to the dual torus. This is what the JISC just explained. But if you consider this middle row, then it is a standard weight one representation of C star and take just N copies, product of N copies of that. that. Then, uh, uh, so this is, when N is equal, equal to one, this is the, just what, so this is example one, and I consider the next example. In that case, we have C, C2, which is C plus C, C dual. And we have N copies of that. So therefore, we just get to Cn plus Cn star. Then this is nothing but the definition of Coulomb, uh, toric hyperkehler manifolds. But the quotient group is instead of T, we just take quotient by TF check. Right? So we have exact sequence, we started with exact sequence of torus like this. But if you consider the dual torus, you get uh, TF check is now sub, sub, sub torus of C star and the quotient becomes T check. Right? So the, in this example, the, somehow Higgs, the relation between Higgs branch and Kuro branch uh, becomes more clear. So starting from, from this exact sequence, you, in the Coulomb, Higgs branch, you take the reduction by T, but for the Coulomb branch, you take the reduction by TF check. And there's T and the TTF, dimensions are different. So Coulomb branch and the Higgs branch are, I mean, have a usually different dimensions. But if you look at the, as I said, you have combinatorial formula for topology, Betty numbers, for example, and you can check that Betty, Betty numbers are the same. For, for, for the, no, 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 the Euler numbers are the same for, for those varieties. Any question? So the first time you have a test that uh, uh -huh. and the second one, uh, ah. Because this is, I define MC as the spectrum of commutative ring. But you can, as I said, you can consider the take, take character here. But that is correspond to the, so TF. TF acts on, on this space. The stability parameter here correspond to the co-character in the torus acting on the space. That, that, that you see in this, in this particular example very clearly. Okay, next I will explain birational description of the Coulomb branch. And this is, in physics literature, it is called classical Coulomb branch. Physicists usually say that the Coulomb branch receives quantum correction, and the classical means the space which you have with, uh, before quantum correction. But in our construction, there is no classical 
Kurovsk. Kurovsk. I mean, just uh, we define the Kurovsk spectrum of commutative ring, but uh, somehow we see the classical Kurovsk branch afterwards in by, by consideration of this this kind of uh, localization theorem in equivalent homology. So first of all, uh, so if you consider the torus, maximal torus uh, in, in G, and consider equivalent homology with respect to the TO equivalent homology group, then the original equivalent homology group is a wild group invariant part of the torus equivalent homology group. This is a uh, general result for equivalent homology group. Then, uh, once you replace for, for the torus, so if you, this is a module of equivalent homology of torus, equivalent cohomology of torus, and if you tensor the fractional fields of, of equivalent homology, then it is isomorphic to equivalent homology of the fixed point, the torus fixed point set of the space, tensor again with fractional fields. And the homomorphism is just given by the inclusion of the, the fixed point set in the, the ambient space. And this is called the localization theorem in equivalent homology group. And this is a very general result for, for equivalent homology. So we apply this, this, this result. So we need to understand what is the torus fixed point set in this variety R. And this is very easy. <coughs> Yeah, maybe I don't need to. So affine Grassmannian, first I consider the case of affine Grassmannian. And we have in the torus action. And the to fixed point set is, is affine Grassmannian for the torus. So this, this, this element which I wrote uh, uh, as Z of mu for weight, for weight mu. And this is a well known fact. <coughs> and and also, this, uh, if you, you use uh, this modulus, mo mo modulus theoretic description, so this T acts as a change of framing, and fixed points, fixed, fixed, fixed point mean that uh, this framing extends to, to the whole, uh, whole disk. So anyway, this is very long. And for, for this N of O and N of K, this is also clear. That the N of O is just a formal power series with values in N, and T acts uh, each coefficient of powers of these. Then uh, it is fixed if and only if those coefficients are all in uh, weight zero subspace, fi fix, fixed points in N. So this is just NT valued formal power series. And the same, same for, for K, N of K. Then, uh, torus fixed point set of R. And because of this, so the T acts on trivially on here. So this becomes the same as T fixed point in, in the larger space T, which is nothing but the space T for the pair the group is replaced by torus, and the representation is replaced by T fixed point. But this, this is a trivial bundle. So that's the, the reason why this, you don't see the, the difference between R and T disappear if once you take the fixed point set. <coughs> then uh, this part, you consider the spectrum of this part. But by the reason what, which I just explained here, so this is a, nothing but the Coulomb branch of for group T and the represent, trivial representation N of T. But tri, you, you can remove the trivial representation. So you can replace it by zero. Then uh, it's nothing but the example which I, example one which I explained yesterday. 
So the corresponding spectrum is cotangent bundled to dual torus. So you get this. So in summary, what it means. So tensoring fractional fields mean that uh, you, 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 you have the birational description of the space. So birationally, the Coulomb branch for this is the same as the Coulomb branch for this, up to this first point, you, have, you need to take the wild group quotient. So it means the Coulomb branch is birational to T cross T check, by the cotangent bundle to dual torus divided by wild group. And we have the structure homomorphism given by the equivalent homology of point. And for, for if you, so this is everything is defined by using equivalent homology. So this more bilateral homomorphism, bilateral homomorphism is compatible with this projection. And for this, uh, this is a projection by the first factor, as I explained in, in, in the first example. So in particular, uh, if you take the fiber of this first projection, this is dual torus. And since this is birational, it means that the generic general fiber of this structure homomorphism, structure morphism is also T check. But we saw as in as we saw in the example of C2. So in example two, we see. So this well, pi was x, y maps to w, which is equal to x times y. So if w is not zero, then this is phi by the c star, but the w is zero, then this is union of two axes, which I just explained yesterday. So in this case, uh, the right hand side is c cross c star, and then c is c2. So they are different, but still birational. Okay, any question? So in particular, the dimension of, of, of the Kula branch is twice the dimension of the torus, which is rank of the gauge group G. So it's independent of the, the representation. But uh, as we saw in this, this example, and also we see that if n, we consider the larger n, then C2 is replaced by type A singularity as I started in today's lecture. So n birational type of the Coulomb branch is independent of the representation, but the actual isomorphism type depends very much on the representation. Okay. Okay, now I, since I started, I just studied the fixed point, uh, I, I study uh, another sister action and study the fixed point set. This is something interesting. Right? And in fact, this, this study of fixed point set is, is in fact very relevant if you want to understand, study the representation theory of quantized Coulomb branch. So we study the, the loop rotation on the R. So we take, in, in the previous case, so we take the maximal torus of, of, of the gauge group and consider the fixed point. But the loop rotation is, is completely uh, different from the, this torus. And what is the fixed point set? In, in the variety T and also this. this. So basically the, the R was the inverse image of N of both. So you just need to understand both. <clears throat> and as I said, the question is relevant for analysis of representation theory of the contact Coulomb branch. So in, in finite dimensional setting, the, the, this is well known. Tool to understand representation theory of, um, of algebra, which is, is defined by convolution. So it is explained in the last chapter of Chris Ginsburg. And Bacero, in fact, used uh, 
use the same, same, same method to in the infinite dimensional situation of when he understand the Daha uh, as a uh, variant of this concept. I mean, yeah, this is Basel's study is earlier than the Kuro match. So anyway, uh, let me just study the, what is the sister fixed point of the, uh, those varieties. And first I consider the case of affine grass manual. And this is well known. And this is just the disjoint union of, of various partial flag varieties. So mu is dominant co-character. And instead of GO action, you restrict to the constant loop G. So this G mu is a point in, in affine grass manual, which was, in fact, was or a fixed point. And then consider the GO, GO bit. And at least it is easy to see that if you have an element like this, then it is fixed by loop rotation by this formula. So you have G0 is a constant loop, and we have G of mu. And if you take the sister loop rotation, then you replace G by G times tau. But then uh, you have this formula, so because this is the, the mu is homomorphism. So you have a tau of mu, which is in G of O. So as a element in the fibrous manner, this is equal to G0 times G of mu. So this is a fixed point. And all the fixed points appear in this way. And if you consider the orbit, then this is a partial flag variety, G mod P mu. P mu is a par parabolic subgroup corresponding to mu. So you have this. And the fixed point in N of K is even easier. So you have the formal row and power is like this. And you impose that S of G times G tau is equal to S of G. But this is just a formal power series. It means that AI, those coefficients vanishes except constant part, A0. So other part just vanish. Then it means that this fixed point set is equal to N. Then uh, you can study the fixed point set in, in here, in the variety T. So a point element in here is written as the pair G, G time, pairs of GG and SG. Maybe this is important part, so I just carefully write. <coughs> So this is equal to So you have this formula for all tau. <clears throat> and then uh, so we already know that this this is a, a fine grass manian part. So we already know this is of the form G zero times G to the power mu for some mu. <laughs> Then this is equal to G0 times G to the G tau to the power mu. So which is G0, G of mu times tau of mu. <clears throat> then you can move this tau of mu. So this bracket is a quotient by, so this T, T was the quotient. So you can move this tau of mu to, to, to this part. So this is, maybe this is, maybe. 
So from that, you, you see that this SZ and this, this must be the same. But then it means that uh, S, S of Z is determined by S of 1. Determined here, S of Z. Z to the minus mu times S of 1. So basically, this is very similar to, to, to the, this. Okay, the analysis of this first part, uh, second part. But you still have one more condition. So t, t, t is, uh, is this space. So s of z must be in, in n of o. This is, must be formal parses, not the lower and formal lower and parses. So it means this must be, this, must, this cannot have negative powers. So then S1, S1 is not arbitrary element in N. So S1 must be, S1, so here, it is written here. Wait, oh, I have it, right? S1 is in this space. So this is a, n is a representation of, of, of G, and mu is, is a co-character. So you can regard n as a representation of C star, and you have weight space decomposition. And this S1 should be in, in non-positive non, non weight spaces, right? So I think it is written here. Yeah, direct some weight subspace with those weight, pairing with weight. This weight and the mu must be non, non positive. Right? So, because of that, so you see that this is equal to mu <coughs> of G plus P mu and N of. So this is a vector bundle over G mod P. And then, uh, except this, this, uh, this joint union with respect to mu, this is the exactly the same, uh, this is exactly the toy model which I started in the uh, start in, in, in which I started in, in the first lecture when I explained the convolution product right <clears throat> so we have G and parabolic subgroup, and we have representation V, and we have V prime. So this is not the representation of G, but uh, this is a P invariant. Then we define M to be G cross P V prime, and then it maps to V, and this is X in one situation, and we consider G, which is fiber product of M cross, go, M cross M over X, which is pair G, P, G1, V1, V2, V2, and G1, V1 is equal to G2. <coughs> then we consider H star. So by the technical reason which I briefly explained yesterday, so we cannot consider the, directly consider the, the analog of G here 
what, 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 what's t cross t. So analog of this is h star of g of k of t cross t over n of k. So this is analog. But by technical reason, we need to replace this by r. But if you go to the finite dimension station, you, you don't need to go consider this, this one. It, it becomes, it, it's isomorphic. And what I I to say, what I said is once you uh, use this geometric analysis of the convolution algebra for this variety, then it is natural to consider I mean, in general, it, you need to consider a little bit more general C stack, but I think this is essential. This already showed the essential feature. So if you take the fixed point set, then you get those kind of uh, convolution algebra, which uh, you, you, you saw in finite dimension. So in that sense, this Coulomb branch is not too far away from the convolution algebra which uh, you have been studying in finite dimensional setting. And in fact, if you try to use, try to understand the representation theory, then you return back to the familiar finite dimensional situation. Okay, now I think this is a good point to make a break. So let us make a 10 minutes break. Mm -hmm. Ah, so it is somehow related to this. So you have H bar, but we specialize H bar to be non zero one. So if you take H bar to be zero, then this mean, it means that you ignore the, the loop rotation. But how you haven't finished it, right? You haven't finished this, uh, what you want to have to say, other than this conversation. You want to uh, still connect uh, to this quantum deformation something with something else? Or hmm? This picture. So once you want to understand the representation theory of the quantized Coulomb branch at yeah. non zero H bar. Yes. If H bar is non zero, you, yes. you can consider this distraction and it reduces to the study of the fixed point set. It's less than can be reduced to this. the analysis for, for the finite measure. Yeah. And if H bar, if you just ignore H bar, then it reduces to the infinity. If you use this, uh, but in like a parallel consideration, did he study finite dimension or infinite dimension of this? Both. I think the, 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 I mean, because you have many, here, 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 this distribution is here, and this is infinite. Infinite sum. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in general, I mean, I think it's kind of global. You have new and new prime, and you have the natural. Kind of. No, but still the analogy is like uh, we'll take a star fixed point uh, 
in the previous slide, you get other. No, 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 it's much simpler. And take the three statistics points together. That's much more complicated. Uh, like this is the different location is analog to the, the, the W. Uh, mm, no. I, I don't think this is not this is not this is not this is not this
Is it working? Okay, it's working. Really okay. okay, let me resume. <clears throat> so I briefly mentioned uh, previously no example. Previously mean that uh, if, before we def give, give this definition of a cool one, there is uh, there are two 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 works which could be considered a, as an example of a cool one. So that is. First one is mentioned in Ruben's talk. So you take G to be arbitrary complex reductive group or maybe simple group and uh, representation is zero. So then this is just uh, the variety T is the same as the Grassmannian. So you just consider the uh, equivalent homology of the Grassmannian and its spectrum was computed by Bezuk, Afnik, Finkelberg, and Markowitz. So this is a so-called uh, universal centralizer. So this is a pair of universal centralizer for, for G-check. So this is a pair of the element in the real uh, of the group and its real algebra, Gx. Maybe I forget to write the, so this is a centralizer, so they, they are commuting. G, Gx committed of G and X, or, or I mean, adjoint to G of X is G. <clears throat> so there are Two, possibi two, two possibilities for group and uh, either take put, putting group or real algebra for, for, for the superscript and for subscript. So there are four versions, but in this case, this is a pair of G and X. So adjoint GX is equal to X, and X is regular. X is regular element. <coughs> and then take the simultaneous conjugation. So this is the definition of universal centralizer. So you can, this equation is basically the same way. So if you both are real algebra element, you just consider commutator is equal to zero. But you impose regularity assumption. Otherwise, the quotient space is not nice. <clears throat> so anyway, so I, I just briefly, I just mentioned that there is previously no example of the Coulomb branch. And in fact, we, we somehow steal the proof of this isomorphism to more general setting, in the more, more general setting, and we use the same, same technique to determine the Coulomb branch in data examples. And the quantitation is also known. This is the so-called Toda lattice. And uh, 
Another example is the G is arbitrary and the representation is adjoint representation. And in this case, uh, so this Coulomb branch is just the cotangent bundle to dual torus divided by wild group. So I just explained this is uh, the classical Coulomb branch. But in this particular example, if the, the representation is adjoint representation, the, there is no quantum correction in physics sense. The classical Coulomb branch is, is exactly the, the Coulomb branch. And again, the proof is similar to the proof for this, which I will explain in other examples. And uh, its quantization, is, strictly speaking, you must also introduce the flavor symmetry group. So DAHA has, has uh, uh, several parameters. I think in this case, two parameters, Q and T. And Q is the, Q is the, Ah, first of all, they, Bacero and the parameter Bacero consider the slightly different um, version of this. Uh, namely, instead of the uh, affine Grassmannian, they consider the affine flag variety. And instead of the equivalent homology, they consider the, the equivalent K theory. So because of the, the, that reason, Bacero and the parameter Bacero obtain the, the DAHA. But in our setting, we get trigonometric DAHA, which is a degenerate, degenerate version of DAHA. So classical counterpart is here, the real algebra of the T is replaced by the group. So for, for if you consider the equivalent case, you should get T cross T check divided by, by a group. But if you consider the equivalent homology, we should have this. <coughs> So anyway, and also because of the, they consider the flag, but affine flag variety, but we here consider affine Grassmannian, then we just take the so-called spherical part of the So anyway, so I, I don't want to go into the detail of this, these examples. I just want to mention that there are, uh, there are pre previously studied cases, but somehow we generalize uh, those example to more general group and representations. Okay, then I start to talk about. Uh, before you go on, mm? instead of if you instead of using equivalent homology, if you do use equivalent free theory, do you get a commutative? Or yeah, still we get we get to still. Uh, it's very much the same. Uh, we still get a commutative ring and we consider its spectrum. And then the variety is slightly different from the variety uh, given from, from the homology group. And we usually get the multi, so-called multiplicative version of the variety. And yeah, maybe, 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 maybe we, I, I, I can explain it a bit more after, after, after my talk. <clears throat> Any other question? Yeah, so far, the, 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 the definition of Coulomb branch is very general. So starting from group, complex reductive group, and its representation, we apply this, this, this construction. Uh, we get some variety. But the, since this is, I mean, spectrum of some commutative ring, and this is somehow not the geometric definition, so it's, hmm? Uh, so far it isn't uh, because uh, we define it as a spectrum of commutative ring. And uh, I mean, of course, if you modify the construction, mod modify the definition, maybe you, you, you could consider such, such cases, but uh, uh, at this moment, we, we, we just uh, uh, understand it's a, as a variety. So even for, for this, co this case, let me see what was it. 
So this proposition. So this is isomorphism of, of, of varieties. And, but since we are taking the uh, reduction, so a priori the moment map equation may not be the, the correct equation. So you should consider the DG scheme in here. And we are taking also the, the quotient. We should consider DG stack in here, right hand side mapping. Uh, if you treat these variety more correctly. But this proportion is at least that the, the true in the level of the, of the variety. So I first uh, prepare the setting, uh, the notation. We start with Squibar. So Q0 is a set of vertices and Q1 is a set of edges. So we, we, have, we put orientation. We take orientation of, of, of edges. So for any uh, edge, we have the outgoing vertices and the incoming vertices. I denote by OH and IF, H. And then, then I take two Q0 graded to finite dimensional complex vector spaces, which I denote by V and W. Then I take a product of general linear groups, product of the vertices. And so I slightly change the notation. So this is mass BF, mass BFG. So I will use G for, for different above subclass. So I slightly change the notation. And its representation is again, a, I use the different font. So this is a, a space of homomorphism from outgoing uh, vector space, the vector space for outgoing vertex and vector space to the incoming vertex. And also I add this vector space. So w, sometimes WI is, I is call, called the framing, framing vector spaces. And I also add this. And the physicists use this notation, which I already used in the example. So I take the dimensions of VI and the WIs and denote by small letters. And then for, for B, I surrounded by circle. And for framing vector space for W, I surrounded by square. And I denote in this way. So I and J are connected by edge. Then I draw, draw edge in this way. And strictly speaking, I should add arrow from I to J if this is, or because this edge is oriented. But uh, as I said in, in the beginning, I secretly consider the cotangent bundle to N. Then I also add the direct uh, arrow in the opposite direction. So in that sense, I mean, of course, we also need to show that so this is independent, the construction is independent of the choice of the, uh, of, of the orientation. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this part I, I, I omit, but it is known that this, you, 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 it's Coulomb branch is independent of the choice of orientation. It is apparent for, for the Higgs branch. So this is called Quiver variety, and you can put the stability condition chi, which is some product of some powers of determinant of the eyes. So this is the first remark. And the second remark is, so we just studied the sister loop rotation on, on this variety. And I said that in order to understand the quantization of the Coulomb branch, you need to understand the convolution algebra for this fixed point set. And you just apply the the, what I just said. So you replace this kind of vector bundle on, on the partial flag variety and you, you, you apply this, this kind of fiber product. Then you see that this fixed point set is exactly, I mean, it's slightly different, but uh, difference it just gives a more equivalent one. So the fixed point set is basically the variety which Lustig used to define the canonical basis. So he have considered the constant C from M and push forward to X and he defined the canonical base as the direct summand uh, of 
of simple power shift, whose shift appears, simple power shift, whose shift appears in the direct, direct image. And in fact, Baranyol and Basel proved that this convolution algebra, and in fact, maybe there, there's a slightly complicated point that, so as I said, so T fixed point is G, G cross P nu bar and N of mu. So this is the decision continue over various dominant plate view. So if you consider the fiber product, so you could have different mutes. So this is the first component. So mu prime, mu prime. And you take fiber product. Fiber product is always over the N. So this is common, it's independent of mu and mu prime. <clears throat> so you define the composition on, on this. Then if you fix mu and mu prime, then it's not, not, not algebra. If this is the same, it is algebra, but if they are different, then it's bimodule and mu, so you have mu and mu prime, and you have mu, mu prime, so if you take a convolution product, variety for mu and for mu, mu prime, mu, mu double, then this up to mu and mu, mu double prime. So in this way, so in fact, in Kuiba in, in Heckel algebra, <coughs> introduced by one of the uh, ha, ha, has this form. And I, I, mu, mu appears as idempotent in, in KLR algebra. <clears throat> and this is so when W is equal to zero. So it means that this fixed point sub algebra, fixed point algebra. Ah, no, no. And the convolution algebra for fixed point set is a generalization of kuiba heck algebra. And as I said, the, if you study the quantization of the Coulomb branch, so you need to understand uh, uh, representations of kuiba heck algebra. But you see, you, by Baronir Vassel, that, for example, the uh, simple modules of kuiba heck algebra are <coughs> a dual canonical basis element. And you have you interpreted that result as a uh, parameterization of simple module of quantized Coulomb branch. <clears throat> so you have this kind of relation to well-studied representation theory. So now uh, I consider I return back to commutative algebra and Coulomb branch. I consider the Coulomb branch. So I may write uh, in this. I may use this notation M C of V of W and W because group and representation is determined by Kuiba and representation. Kuiba is hidden here <coughs> in this notation. And we have the action of Pontryagin dual of the fundamental group of, of the gauge group, which in this case for each, so G is a product of a general linear group, each gives C star. So in total you have uh, Q0 copies of C star which I did not write T of Q0. So this acts on the Coulomb branch. And you have deformation parameter. So in what, I, I don't write what is the larger group acting on the space, but yeah, maybe return back to this. So you have here, I consider only the, the product of general linear group. But we still have a general linear group of W acting on the space. So you have the larger group symmetry. And in fact, there's root, if there is a loop in the graph, then you can have extra system action. This is a little complicated pattern. I, 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 I don't go, I don't want to go into detail. But for example, if you consider Jordan Kuiba, then uh, you have this extra system acting on the space. 
And there is one interesting example. So if you know, if you are familiar with the uh, theory of quiver varieties, so it's no uh, uh, quiver variety is related to the representation theory of symmetric Katsumudi D algebras. And somehow uh, it's not it's not known how to define the quiver varieties for non-symmetric symmetrizable algebras. And even for, for canonical, canonical bases, uh, there's a definition, there's no, I mean, there's definition of the canonical basis for non-symmetric E algebra, but that, that definition is not geometric. <clears throat> On the other hand, for the Coulomb branch, there's very, there's a simple trick to, to, to deal with the symmetrizable case. So the point is, so if you return back to the definition of this Coulomb branch, so we use the affine Grassmannian for groups, but uh, G, since G is a product of general linear groups, so we have various affine Grassmannian. We have several affine Grassmannian for asso associated with each vertex. Then uh, you can use different affine Grassmannian living in, on, on different puncture disks for each vertex. So, I, I use G for, for the uh, variable for formal power series, but now G could be, uh, <coughs> G, G could depend on, on the vertex I. So I use this notation GI. And Carter matrix is symmetrizable, so there's DI such that DI times AIJ is equal to DJ times AJI. So I use this DI to consider the covering of GI and common covering of GI and DJ. So this is the DI covering and this is DJ covering. And because of this formula, so you get the, the common, common, common puncture this here. So this is <coughs> the common one. Then, uh, so if you have you need to consider homomorphism from VI to VJ. So we, <coughs> this variety T, So this is, this now become, for, for example, so we are constant GL, VI of GI times GL, VJ. No, this is for my partial. So this part is okay and this part is okay, but N, N is, N, N contains component like this. But you must make this to be formal parses in something, and this could not be simultaneously either GI or GJ. But you take this, introduce this, this common piece. So you, so in, in more modular theoretic language, so you have affine Grassmannian parameterized vector bundle on the puncture disk, uh, 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 vector bundle on, on, on the formal disk together with trivialization of a puncture disk. And the VI is associated vector bundle. Then, then you just pull back to this covering, common covering, and then consider the homomorphism there. So this is what, what, what this condition is. <clears throat> Then uh, the rest of the construction is very much the same. So you, you can, you have the, the commutative ring and you consider its spectrum. This becomes the, uh, uh, this, this is the definition of the Coulomb branch. 
in symmetrizable case. <coughs> now I describe uh, what is a Coulomb branch in this example. I first start with the case W is equal to zero. And I also assume Q, the, the, the quiver is, is of finite type. And I allow, as I just explained, it, it, it could be symmetrizable case, so it's, it, it could be type B or, B or C, for example. <clears throat> then I take the corresponding complex simple real algebra, G, and cons con corresponding group G, which is of adjoint type. <clears throat> and as I indicated already, so this must be G it was used for, for the gauge group. And this is product of general linear group. But this G is a simple group of adjoint type. So they, they, they are completely different. But somehow, Miraculously, so they, 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 if you, once you consider the chromat, then you get, even though at the beginning you don't see any G at all, I mean, you only see the G as from the, the combinatorial data of Ginkin diagram. But if you apply this construction, miraculously, you, you, you will see the, the group G. So this is the result. So we consider the, we define alpha Covite alpha, which is uh, linear combination of, of this type, dimension bi times alpha i, where alpha is a simple covert. <clears throat> then this is isomorphic to moduli space of based map from P1 to flag variety. The based mean that the infinity is going to the, the special point in the flag variety. So this point is the opposite beam in B1 B, whose degree is equal to alpha. So H2 of the flag variety is a co-root lattice of the, of, the, of the group. And I consider alpha to be the, I identify this. Thank you. <clears throat> and this this space, based modular space of base map is also called the, called, called the open just about space. And in, the, in fact, this 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 result is known in physics literature. This this is in physics it is called the modular space of monopoles, G monopoles, or K monopoles, correct? Take, taking compact degree, K monopoles on R three. Yes, so it's defined just from, from the, the Dinkin diagram. So I start with quiver, and I take the, I consider it as a Dinkin diagram, and I define the real algebra. Oh, oh, oh I see this, 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 yeah, I thought it could be a quiver. Yeah, so yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, maybe I, I emphasize again. So this is really mysterious. I start with just, just, just the Dinkin diagram, and apply this Coulomb branch construction. Then miraculously, I get some variety which is defined by using G. But you also need uh, those uh, quiver, uh, 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 capital N and capital G, the other G, B and G, right? That's how that it appears in this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, that, that appears, I mean, of course, it, it depends just only on the dimension. The representation is just to give the dimension. And the dimension is encoded in, in the degree of this map. So, so in, all, all the information are uh, used in, in here.
And uh, unfortunately, um, I, mean, I, I, I will explain the sketch of proof. And this proof is somehow very unsatisfactory proof, I must admit. Uh, somehow, as I said, physicists already know the, uh, what is the, the Coulomb branch in advance. No, no, they have some method to, to understand Coulomb branch. And we just start with their answer, and we just check that it is correct. So this is how we, our proof goes. Somehow we don't know, we don't understand why it should be the, this best map, but I just, we just believe what physicists say, and we just check that our definition recover that. So let me try to explain how we prove. So first we maybe recall that we have birational description of Coulomb branch. So we have a structure morphism to T mod W. And we have So if we try to see that the Coulomb branch is isomorphic to, to a modular space of base map, then we first should have the same diagram which we replace MC by this modular space. So this is the first thing which you need to consider. And in this case, T, T and T check is, you, you can, in this particular case, for each vertex i, we have dimension vi copies of C cross C star and divide by y group, which is just a symmetric group of dimension vi letters. So I do not buy this one. Ah, I use the different notation. So I should use must be f. And also I change that wire group, or notation for wire group also. <clears throat> and for type A1, uh, the flag variety is P1. Then the best, uh, best rational map, e, e, best uh, holomorphic map from P1 to P1 e, e, is uh, this rational function. So RG over QZ. And Q is a monic polynomial of degree alpha. And P is a polynomial of degree less than, less than alpha. Because we have the condition that at the infinity, if Z is infinity, this should go to zero. So this is the best map condition. So that, uh, because of that, let me see what is, I think P, P is equal to R in this. Z type of so this. P is equal to R. <clears throat> so I normalize the the QZ is monic, normalized so the constant, degree alpha, and PZ. <coughs> now I consider alpha, I, I identify alpha with integers because this is H2 is one dimension. Then uh, I consider the zeros of the zeros of Q, the denominator. So we have alpha, alpha roots, alpha zeros, counted with multiple series. I denote by this by double one to double alpha. Then uh, 
we substitute double i to the numerator. And this should be well-defined map to P1, P, from P1 to P1. That means there should be no common zero. So then R of double one is not zero, so it's element in system. All R, also R, R double alphas. So you have, and you also remember double alphas. So you have element in C class C, alpha, alpha C class C, C star element. But uh, the ordering between double one, uh, ordering among double one, double, double I is uh, irrelevant. So everything should be considered up to, up to ordering. So you must take the quotient by symmetric group of alpha letters. So you have a birational map from based map from P1 to P1 to, to this, this C, C cross C star to the power alpha divided by CS1. And the first projection, uh, ju just counting the zeros of Q, this is basically given by characteristic polynomials of Q. So it is well defined map from, from modular space to, to this place. And this is birational because you substitute the double I to R. <coughs> And this is uh, the definition for, for case G, G is SL2, uh, Q, Q, Q is A1, A1 quiver, but uh, you can generalize this definition to arbitrary, arbitrary group. I mean, if you are familiar with flag variety, then you, you, I hope you could understand how to do it. <coughs> so you, you can define in a similar way uh, a diagram like this. Then, Next, what do you do? Then, uh, somehow there might be some ability between, so, so I, I, I think I, I use the localization theorem to, to make a birational isomorphism between them. But there's, I mean, you can, also apply the automorphism here. So there might be some ambiguity. So it must be really specify, specify which birational morphism I, I get for here. <coughs> so after that, so this is a, I, I don't have any good explanation, but somehow by computation, I, I choose the correct one. Then, because we have so by combining this, so which is which I don't yeah. I have a birational map C from modular space base map to Coulomb branch by composition of those two maps. <clears throat> so this is the first step. Then we need to check uh, that this Z of, this in fact, this is a smooth, so you, you can prove a much better property, but in, in more general setting, this Coulomb branch could be singular. So in general, you need to show that this, this is to be normal. I mean, I, 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 I the reason for, for normality will be clear from this argument afterwards. So anyway, so you first, first need to check this is normal variety. And also you need to check this morphism is flat. And in fact, both properties is, is, is easy to check. Both properties are easy to check for Coulomb branch. <coughs> so this is A. And A is just about the, this variety modular space of base map. It's nothing to do with the Coulomb branch. It's purely about problem for, 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 for this modular space of base maps. And in fact, in the, these properties are already known in, in the literature. Pinkerberg and Markovic and others studied these kind of things. <clears throat> then, uh, 
Second thing which you need to check is that this C, this birational morphism, which you want to show that birational morphism uh, extends to by isomorphism, isomorphism. But in order to check this property, you, need, you don't need to check uh, the, the regularity everywhere. You only need to check this, this C extent to slightly bigger set, not the whole set. So you, in here, so because of this localization, or in, in modular space of base map, so you consider open subset which consists of distinct, having distinct zeros. So this, this, this corresponds to distinct. So first, C by the construction, C is defined over here. But what you need to extend is slightly larger one. So in terms of zero, it means, so they are completely distinct, but here you allow multiplicity at most two. So this, this, this is a la, la, larger set. <clears throat> then, so over here, as I said, this is flat. So the, if you consider the, the inverse image of this set, so it's open subset in, in the Kuro branch or over here. But uh, this is flat, and this is co-dimension two because you allow the multiplicity. So this is complement is co-dimension one. You have hyperplanes, several hyperplanes. But here I remove the intersections of hyperplanes. So this complement is co-dimension two, and here it is inverse image because this is flat. Inverse image in the inverse image, the complement is again co-dimension two. The once you have the normal varieties, then the isomorphism in isomorphism in co-dimension two automatically extend to the isomorphism everywhere. So this is a well-known property for the normal variety. So we use this trick many, many times in, in other situations. And also, so, so this is somehow compatible, it is very, this, this kind of property is, can be checked by using the localization equivalent homology. So in order to get the birational isomorphism, we study the torus fixed point with torus fixed point of the variety R. But in order to understand B, you, use, you can use the same, same technique. Instead of generic element in the real algebra, you, you take a slightly more generic, so slightly more, more, more general. So you allow zero in multitude two, so you take a Xi element of Xi in, 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 in T black circle, which is nothing here. Then the fixed point set becomes larger than the fixed point set with respect to torus. And this gives a, a local description of the, uh, of the Coulomb branch. And this Coulomb branch, maybe I, I, I so maybe I, So we studied, so R of T, so this was T of T, and this is R for G is replaced by torus, and the representation is replaced by the X point for the torus. <clears throat> uh, 
And similarly, R of xi. So now it is different from T of xi. But we have a similar picture. So this is R for so the centralizer and xi and n restricts it. So you have this kind. And in this particular, this is very general so result, but in this particular example, so g of g xi, if xi is in here, it, it's It reduced the, the case of Tore. Let me see. Oh, why it is? Maybe, maybe, maybe this might. So I think the, it should, there should be the case when, for GL2. So this, this, this is not quite correct. But anyway, so since G of GXC is always a smaller group, so we explicitly know, know what should be, what, what is a Coulomb branch. And we have the explicit coordinate on this Coulomb branch for, for smaller group and smaller representation. And we just check that this birational isomorphism extend to everywhere. So in this way, uh, we prove that Coulomb branch is isomorphic to G marker. <coughs> so as I said, uh, somehow this, this is not the conceptual proof, but in known, so far in all known cases, we need some, some, some guess of what should be the, the explicit description of the Coulomb branch, and we check these properties. So in this way, we identify various Coulomb branch. And uh, somehow, <coughs> uh, we still, uh, we still don't have a conceptual uh, description of Coulomb branch in general. So anyways, I, I stop here. Thank you for attention. <laughs> so any question? Yeah, it's always flat. Uh, this is, uh, this comes from the, how to say, you use uh, the Schubert uh, varieties for the fine grass manning, and uh, the each five. So you have the. <coughs> so basically, the same say same argument which you used. So you have R to the fine grass manning, and this has. Stratification by by orbit. So this is and you have the corresponding stratification. And then uh, because of parity, so you consider the associate, you consider the Maya B2 sequence and you have the parity condition, and this is the affine space. This, 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 each stratum is a vector bundle over the flag variety, and so you don't have odd, odd degree cohomology in here, and also the fiber is vector space again here, so you don't have, the, so the Maya B2 sequence just splits, and because of that, so this equivalent homology is a, Free, free module over equipment module point that, that guarantee this flatness. And the normality is a little bit more direct. I, I, I don't think I, I have time to explain, but normality is a little bit more delicate, and you need to understand what happens in code dimension, code dimension one. And again, using a similar kind of te te technique which I just explained. Oops. So you, you need to understand the normality only in those 
neighborhood of those cities. And that, in, in that case, we, we can explicitly write under the Kuron branch and check that this is normal and that is enough. 